Hey everybody, it's Mike with the Rails Around Train Guy Show. This week on the show, we're gonna visit the world famous Illinois Railway Museum in Union, Illinois. We're going to ride some trains, we're going to talk to some volunteers, we're going to participate in the overnight photo session, and we're gonna dodge a few thunderstorms in the process. So come along, let's have some fun. When IRM was founded in 1953, it was initially known as the Illinois Electric Railway Museum, but Electric was removed from the name in 1962. After the acquisition of Indiana Railroad car number 65, the collection continued to grow, reaching some 40 pieces of equipment by 1964. Originally located in North Chicago, it relocated at that time to an empty field east of Union. The reason this site was chosen was because of the long abandoned right of way of the Elgin and Belvedere Electric Railway could be cheaply acquired simply by paying the back taxes. Initially a mile and a half of right of way and a small 26 acre plot where the new depot now sits were purchased. The collection of 40 pieces of equipment was transported to Union in 1964. Over the half century since, IRM has expanded steadily. The collection of historic equipment has grown over tenfold to reach roughly 500 pieces of historic railway and transit equipment. The size of the developed property has expanded to 100 acres, while the mainline railroad has been extended to include nearly five miles of the former EMB right-of-way. Nearly four miles worth of track are now under cover, providing protected storage for the vast majority of the historic collection of trains. After spending the day at Monticello, seen in the previous episode, we arrive at IRM in the evening to take part in the overnight operating session as part of the museum showcase weekend. Trains operating included Frisco 1630, the Nebraska Zephyr behind E59911, Shea number no. 5, and various interurban electric cars. Frisco 210 number 1630 was built for export to Russia in 1918. The Bolshevik Revolution that year nixed the deal and instead she was ultimately sold to the St. Louis San Francisco Railway where she operated in freight and passenger service into the mid 1950s. She was acquired by IRM in 1967. Next up is the Nebraska Zephyr behind CB&Q E5 number 9911. So here we are at the Illinois Railway Museum in Union, Illinois, and they are running trains here all night on this festival weekend from Saturday all through the night until Sunday at 6 p.m. Super cool. Got a thunderstorm coming in behind us, so that's adding to the excitement. So we'll see how long they run trains here tonight, but they're supposed to run all night through the night. Pretty cool. When trains depart the museum, they run southeast about four miles to the end of track before reversing course past the museum and then returning to the station platform.
With the smell of rain in the air and drops starting to fall, I decided to call in tonight and hope for better weather in the morning. Next morning, we catch a ride behind Frisco 1630 and have a chat with the train's conductor. Hi, Bob Neal. Nice to meet you, Bob. Um, so how long have you been volunteering here at uh, Illinois Railway Museum? It's my fourth year. Your fourth year? Yeah. Okay. And what drew you to it? Well, I've been a member here for a long time. And I've always been a train nerd. So I thought, you know, as long as I had the time, I'm retired. What a great way to spend my time. So I said, let's see what it's like, and I've been here ever since. So what is your favorite piece of equipment here? Would it be the, the Pullman's? Or? Yeah, I think, yeah, I really do. Of course, the Zephyr. Yeah, everybody loves the Zephyr. The sure. Zephyr is, I think, everybody's dream train out here. We, we talk about it on every trip we go on. So, you know, but other than that, Zephyr, which only runs so many times, and like these only run so many times a year. I kind of associated with working for Disney because everybody comes out here to have fun. Nobody comes out here to be crabby. So all your all my passengers are having a good time. They want to, they want to enjoy their day. They got a lot of interesting questions. The only one that gets crabby is me by the end of the day. Otherwise, everybody's happy out here. With Electric being in its original name, the museum has a large collection of electric interurban cars, locomotives, and even buses. This pair of Chicago, Aurora, and Elgin cars is just a sample of their collection that still operates. The Nebraska Zephyr was constructed by the Bud Company for the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy in 1936. It was originally used between Chicago and Minneapolis and was one of two identical train sets known as the Twin Zephyrs. In 1947, IRM's train set was reassigned to the Nebraska Zephyr between Chicago and Lincoln, Nebraska and was typically hauled by an E5 such as the 9911. The 9911 was built in 1940 for the Zephyr trains, could run up to 115 miles an hour. It was donated to the museum in 1968, same year as the Zephyr train set. I'm Aaron Suarjuski. I'm 18. Um, I've been coming to the museum since I was probably two or three, um, but I just started as a volunteer about a year ago. Um, I mainly work in the diesel department. Uh, but sometimes I work on the dining crew of the Nebraska Zephyr, as you can see here. And I think it's a great opportunity for those who want to get involved in the museum, especially at a young age. Um, there's a lot for you to do, a lot for you to learn. Um, and it's all really fun, you know, you get to cook pretty fancy meals. Um, if you're working on the dining crew here, or if you'd like to be a trainman and talk about the history of the train and inform people, um, it really adds to the experience that people get when they come here. Um, or if you want to work on the mechanical side of things, the operations, um, you know, making these trains move, that's why people come out here. And we really need um, younger folks as well to uh, really just keep this museum going. So what's for breakfast this morning? It smells really good. Oh, we're having uh, French toast, uh, bacon, eggs, uh, sausage gravy with biscuits, and um, then we're having fruit on the side. Nice. So what did, what did you have to do to get ready for this trip today? Um, the entire train? Well, we actually, this train has no refrigeration. It's all powered by ice. Okay. Um, and the stove is powered by charcoal from 1936. Um, the wow. entire kitchen's original. So we actually iced the diner uh, Wednesday and loaded up with charcoal. Um, it 
takes about two hours for this stove to go from stone cold to operating temperature. It's cast iron. Uh, we loaded up all the food and everything. For last night's dinner, we had a uh, steak, potatoes, asparagus. You know, we cut all that by hand, seasoned everything, marinated it. Oh, we had shrimp as well. Nice. Uh, just a great experience. You learn a ton. And it's fun, you know? Uh, sure. And you get free steak. Nice. The meals Aaron referred to were served on extra fare trips hosted on board the Nebraska Zephyr with two dinner trips Saturday evening and two breakfast trips Sunday morning. All four chances at a rare meal on board a train were quickly sold out. When 1630 returns to the platform, we'll take a few minutes to talk to a couple of her crew members, including the engineer. I'm Joey Ferrito. Hi Joey, and what do you do here? So I am a volunteer here in the steam department, um, work in the shop, I'm a fireman on both of our locomotives, uh, electric car motorman, a little bit of everything. <laughs> Great, how long have you been doing that? I've been out here since 2017. The best part about this is bringing the equipment out and having people see it and making people happy. Just getting kids up on a ladder by the cab window, just making people smile, bringing the engine out. is there, There's really some joy in that. Awesome. And you were involved in last night's overnight run? Yes, yes. So I was a fireman uh, on 1630 between about 3 o'clock last night and 3 o'clock this morning. So, wow. Yeah. How'd that go? How many riders did you have? Uh, we were pretty busy last night. I was really happy to see a really big number of people coming out, riding trains, uh, and sticking through the weather. I mean, we made four or five trips last night, um, and after we cut off, diesels came on, and people were still riding while we were servicing the engine this morning. So it seems like people really enjoyed it. A general day out here for firemen is about 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, okay. So lighting the engine off in the morning, generally getting on the train by about 11 o'clock and running until about 4 and then putting the engine to bed. So I'm Chris Chasen. I've been volunteering at IRM since 2015. I started working in the shop. After a few years, I started training as a student fireman. So we have a formal program. We do a set number of days on the engine, demonstrate set competencies. Qualified as a fireman probably 2018, 2017, kind of in between those two seasons. And then a few years later, started training as an engineer. Okay. I'm qualified on both of our steam locomotives. I'm the assistant curator of the steam locomotive department at IRM. I also serve on the board of directors and lead several board subcommittees. Okay. Uh, did you work the overnight last night? I work the morning shift, so okay. I hit the property at 2 a.m. Wow. Um, made breakfast on the engine, woke the engine up, serviced it, finished servicing it, and got it out. We did a few runs on the freight train with it, and then brought it back in to top off the water, and then have been running the heavyweight sets then. What's your favorite part about volunteering here? It's sharing the steam engine with other people. It's, you know, kids' faces when they see this thing backing out of the steam leads, and it's alive. 
Nice. And you know, that's something you don't get in stationary museums. That's, I think, what makes IRM special is it really is about recreating the lived experience. It's about the smells, the sounds, it's about the clunk clunk of the air compressor behind me. And that really is what makes this place special, I think. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate Thank it. You. There's a way to get into contact with the museum and our volunteer coordinator, um, and then they'll kind of put you in contact with whatever you're interested in. So, I'm a steam guy, so if that's something you're interested in, you work in steam department, you work in diesel department, track, electric, pretty much whatever. And you're not limited to just doing one thing. There's all kinds of people out here wear all kinds of different hats, so there's, there's plenty of opportunities. And if you've got, you know, skills, that's awesome. You know, if you're a machinist or a welder, we can absolutely find use for you. Uh, but if you're not, and you know very little about this, like I did when I started. Um, everybody's really great about training new people. We're always just happy to see new volunteers kind of trying to keep these skills alive and keep all these things running. Okay, great. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate Thank it. You. Have a good day. Hope you've enjoyed this week's exciting look at the Illinois Railway Museum. See you next time! Hear my